Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We are at the start of the 2041 offseason. Was a successful regular season for the Pirates, 93 and 69 record. Uh, got a wild card as we were four games behind the Cardinals in the NL Central. But as you can see here, it was also a quick exit from the playoffs for the Pirates. Lost the wild card series two games to none. That was in New York. The good news as we begin this offseason is that we received the biggest bump in our budget that we have in our four years playing this playthrough. Uh, first season, we got an $8 million bump. Second season, we got an $8 million bump. Last year, we only got a $4 million bump. And this year, we got a $10 million bump. So the good news is that over the four seasons we've played these Pirates, we've improved our budget by $30 million. Uh, the bad news is that we've been growing our salary obligations pretty dramatically. And even if we were to, heading into next season, cut our scouting debud cut, cut our scouting and development budgets both down to about $10 million, uh, we really don't have any money left for free agents. So we clearly have some tough decisions to make this offseason. Uh, going to start with some of the arbitration eligible players, uh, not going to be able to bring them all back. Um, the scariest number is Ricky Gotti, who's going to be probably 12 and a half to $13 million. Um, he is a key member of our pitching rotation. It was 14 and 11 this past season, has been a um, probably our best pitcher since we took over. You can see that uh, he was 2-18 and 18 the year before we took over. He's won double-digit games every year since, and after a pretty rough first season for us, um, has had an ERA in the mid-threes each of the last three years. So a pretty val valuable pitcher, a two-time All-Star in 2039 and 2040. He finished uh, third in the National League in pitcher war this year. So we definitely want him back. Our rotation has been our strength, and it's unlikely that we're going to be able to send, sign him to a long-term contract because he's looking for about $19 million a year. But want to try to keep the band together as far as our starting rotation for one more year and hopefully have a team that will make a, another run to the playoffs next season. One interesting thing that's almost a little bit disappointing is we had made a trade a year ago for first baseman Adrian Oliva, a career 300 hitter, not the most power in the world, um, but a first baseman with a decent glove, and as I said, career 300 hitter, who has actually won two batting titles um, back in the American League before joining us. He hit 311 for us this year, um, not a ton of power with just six home runs, but was still a productive offensive player for us, but not great defensively. And with that lack of power, put up only a 1.1 war. The problematic thing with Oliva is that throughout most of the season, he was looking for a four-year deal for about $20, $22 million a year, which we were never going to give him, never going to be able to afford to give him. And he's probably not quite, quite worth that. The issue is now his demand is down to three years at a little less than $14 million a year. Also, not what we're going to pay him. But my fear is that we submit a $18.9 million qualifying offer to him. He probably accepts that for one year and then just goes back on free agency next year. So I don't think I can take the risk of giving a qualifying offer to him. I would really love to do it to get the draft pick. But given that the qualifying offer is basically 50% of what he's looking for over the next three years, I think he'll probably take that. And as nice it is, is to have a perennial 300 hitter on our team, a perennial 300 hitter who doesn't walk all that much, who doesn't hit a ton of home runs, and doesn't play a particularly important defensive position for around $13 million a year um, is just a luxury that the uh, Pirates can't afford and certainly can't afford them at close to $19 million a year. So we'll give that some more thought over the next couple of weeks as we head towards free agency. Uh, but leaning towards 
probably moving on from him. Some of the arbitration eligible players that we need to consider moving on from to get our salary down, center fielder Ramon Herrera, shortstop Luis Linares, third baseman Chris Gomez, second baseman Tony Cook, reliever Andy Ochoa, reliever Omar Gayona, reliever Edgar Flores, reliever Willie Arenales, and starting pitcher, minor league starting pitcher for us, um, David Hippolyte. So uh, we're not going to be making offers to a lot of these people. At this point, my goal is to kind of figure out exactly who I am going to make an initial arbitration offer to, who we are definitely going to try to move on from and trade away. And then there will probably be a couple players that will kind of uh, end up in the middle where we'll be t deciding exactly what to do with them over the uh, next couple of weeks until we get to that arbitration um, deadline of November 17th. So actually we've got three weeks until then. So plenty of time for us to figure that out. Uh, since our last episode, I also went in and made um, minor league free agent offers, as you can see, to a fair number of the minor leaguers um, we have in our system who are pending free agents. And I also have made offers to um, the personnel that we need to replace. Uh, generally weren't any big time losses. They were kind of meh coaches that we were fine moving on from. Uh, we did actually promote uh, Alfredo Benitez to fill the hole that we had when our pitching coach retired this year. Uh, you can see he's been in our AAA, he's been our AAA pitching coach for the last four years. Legendary at teaching pitching, only decent with development, but outstanding with mechanics, good with aging, uh, going to fit in well in terms of his personality with the other coaches. Average relationships, but good relationships with the pitchers, which is most important. Uh, and he was also looking for a promotion, so an easy uh, plug-and-play upgrade there for us. And you can see that we didn't feel like we had someone we needed to promote up to Indianapolis in our system. Uh, so we do have a pending offer out for a new pitching coach for us at the AAA level. And our arbitration discussions are off to a rough start. Uh, tried making some offers to Ricky Gotti on a one-year contract, and at this point he's not even interested in talking with us anymore. Um, can see his arbitration number is expected to be $14.3 million. Uh, we were hoping to maybe get him for a little less than that. Um, so this is going to add a level of uncertainty into the decisions that we make um, since we're probably not going to know exactly what he's making next year until three weeks from now after we get through arbitration. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to offer a bit more than what we think his arbitration number is going to be. He's probably going to come in even higher than that. Won't shock me if he comes in around 16 and a half, 17 million. As you saw, the um, expected amount was 14.3. Hopefully, by going a little bit higher than that, we can tip the odds in our favor and hopefully uh, get him signed for next year um, at a fair amount. It's certainly not going to be cheap, but um, as I mentioned, want to run it back out there with the dynamic foursome of um, Ricky Gotti, Tony Santana, Bobby Gonzalez, and this year's rookie Luis Longoria along with uh, Heriberto Rosales as our number five starter next year and uh, come back with the team that um, largely pitched us into the playoffs this year. So we've made some decisions on the obvious people we want to bring back. Um, Greg Gaylord, who was our closer last year, number five starter Heriberto Rosales, Elijah Hilton, uh, righty out of the pen, Willie Arnales, a lefty out of the pen, and Ricky Gotti. Although we're not going to get an agreement with him, we have made the arbitration offer to him. Big decision still to go is what to do with some of the position players. Um, one that we are going to move on from is third baseman Chris Gomez. Uh, 
his arbitration estimate is about $5.8 million. So best case scenario is we get him for about $5.5 million. Um, I like the fact that he's durable. I like the fact that he's got a high work ethic. I like the fact that he's one of the fastest players on our team and an excellent base stealer, good base runner. I like the fact that he's versatile defensively. I like the fact that he can hit some home runs. But if I'm completely about honest about his production over the course of his career, even with all of those things that I like about him, he's kind of a below average-ish offensive player who puts up about one win above replacement every 162 games. And although we'll be leaving ourselves a potential hole at third base, and we've already going to create a hole at first base moving on from Oliva, we've got to get our salary headed in a better direction because as much as I want to bring back as many of these players as possible, if we're going to build anything sustainable in Pittsburgh, we're going to need those scouting and development budgets significantly higher than the level I've paired them to now. I'm okay pairing them back from the level we've been at the last few years. It's not optimal, but if I've got a team that's in contention, I want to try to win while we've got a window to win with Pittsburgh. But we've got to cut some salary, and Gomez to me is given his age and his production and the amount of money he's going to be getting paid next year, the most obvious obvious one to move on for. Um, so we're going to see what we can potentially pick up for Mr. Gomez in a trade. And it looks like we got a pretty, pretty long list of options here. So we're going to spend time uh, looking at the options, seeing if we can come up with something better and uh, let you know what we decide to do and there's actually a fair number of interesting players that we can get for gomez who are much more cost effective um show a couple of them uh, jonathan mckenzie catcher from the nationals we really only have um heel signed next year as a catcher both of our catchers from this season are potential free agents um So with his good defense and a decent arm, he would slot in as a major league catcher for us. Um, so he's definitely in the mix. Um, third baseman Jaden Dixon, um, like the glove, like the defensive versatility, um, not much of a hitter, um, but certainly could take over at third for the loss of Gomez and be a more cost-effective um solution there not as good defensively but um or not as good offensively but would actually be better defensively um another third baseman daniel pineda um, a little bit more of a home run bat but just not the uh perfect defensive profile in my mind um, there's a fair number of relief pitchers who would be decent options Another catcher that really intrigued me was from the Yankees, Giovanni Venturini. Solid defensively with a respectable-ish bat. Um, hit just 203 for the Yankees last year as a part-time. Looks like he might have been a platoon with them. But um, he certainly was also in the mix. But what we're going to end up doing is going with third baseman Tony Cota from the Padres. Not much of a hitter, but he's durable. Some speed, can bunt, great personality. And most importantly, he's a fantastic defensive player. Um, one of our other potential holes this coming season is potentially at shortstop, where we may have to move on from Linares. And if we're able to bring a guy like Tony Coda on, um, he could very easily be a starting shortstop for us. Um, you know, it's almost a waste having someone with that good a glove in at third base. Um, certainly looks like he could play third, second, or short. So he gives us a lot of versatility in the infield. Um, 
great glove. His bat has not been great over the course of his career. You can see a 65 OPS plus, 60 WRC plus. Interestingly, over 162 games, he puts up the same one war that Gomez has done. Um, but he's younger, a lot more cost effective, and uh, in a perfect world, he's a great glove off the bench for us. But given that it's conceivable that we have openings next year at first base, third base, and possibly shortstop, I think bringing him on board with a contract making the major league minimum for Gomez, so that's going to save us about $5 million, is a good trade. Um, we're going to see if we can get a little bit more out of the Padres like we always do. But um, to me, this is um, one potential step in the right direction of um, clearing some salary off of our team for next year. And we were able to get the um, Padres to throw in Jalen Jenkins, uh, just kind of a generic minor league arm. Um, doesn't even have anything special as far as a personality, but a competent pitcher for our, you know, high A or double A pitching staff next year. Um, so we're going to thank Chris Gomez for four good years with us in pinstripes. Uh, but it is time for us to move on, and we'll see what type of role Tony Code is going to have next year. Um, hard to imagine with that personality, that durability, that speed, that salary, and most importantly, that defense, that he is not going to be on the major league roster for us next year. I think the question is just, uh, is he a player coming off the bench or a starter? And if he ends up being a starter, um, which position is he going to be starting at for us? And in a bad piece of news, the fans are not happy that we moved on from Gomez. Um, not going to be the only player that we lose this offseason that uh, causes a drop in fan interest, but hopefully with some of the arbitration eligible players that we look to sign uh, will get a little bit of it back. Uh, you can see that that puts us at a little over six million dollars for free agents getting his potential uh, arbitration salary off of the books. Still got more difficult decisions to make. Uh, probably not the only guy who played a critical role for us last year who's not going to be back, but um, those are the decisions we're going to be working on in the coming days. And I think we've got another trade lined up here. I'm uh, going to trade away starting pitcher David Hippolyte um, on pace to make $1.2 in arbitration. Um, was not even on the major league team for us this year after he traded for him uh, with Minnesota. 4A kind of pitcher in my view, so um, not someone who I have a guaranteed major league contract with. Also need to trade starting pitcher Alex Herrera who's just organizational filler. But we do have to give up our um, former starting second baseman, Tony Cook, uh, was an all-star for us in 2038, a gold glove winner for us in 2039. Uh, just has never really hit much at a major league level. A solid glove, a versatile glove, um, but he's also a player who's in line to make close to $3 million next year. Uh, so it's going to be another addition by subtraction type situation I think and we're going to be able to get one of the catchers we talked about a little earlier from the Yankees uh, Giovanni Venturini looks like he can have a respectable glove looks like he can have a close to respectable bat um, you know over the course of his major league career um, he's put up an 86 OPS plus and an 82 WRC plus if he's able to put up those kind of numbers for us um, while playing good defense at catcher, um, going to be making less than $2 million this year. I think between him and Heal, we most likely um, have our catching platoon figured out. 
Um, Venturini does have one option year left if we decide to move him that way. Um, but I think that perhaps somewhat sadly, um, you know, he becomes one of our one of our catchers next year. Um, again, he's not brilliant defensively, but he is above average. Looks like he can hit enough to stay in the majors. Um, and it lets us get some salary off the books while also guaranteeing that um, we're not going to have to go for Holloway or Quinones because Quinones is similar defensively, honestly similar offensively. He is an Iron Man, but he's older and he's looking for $2.8 million a year. And then Holloway, um, not quite as good defensively, similar-ish bat, not that great like the personality he's looking for 1.6 million um, so potentially costs a little bit less um, but he's a lot older not as good defensively um, has been a closer to average offensive player over the course of his career but until he was with us um, you know spent a lot of his career in Philadelphia and Colorado um, so um, not that Pittsburgh is a horrible hitters park either but um, don't think it's quite to the level that Philadelphia and um, Colorado are. Um, so we're going to do this deal. Um, it'll fill another hole on the team for us. Um, as I said, with Venturini and Heal at catcher, I feel like we'll be set at catcher, we'll be set at outfield, and really all we're going to need to focus on is... Um, potentially revamping our infield and adding a couple more pitchers. So we are going to go ahead and complete that trade. And uh, the revamp of the Pirates continues. You can see that we're opening up a little more money with each of these trades, which is um, really what we need to do because we want to get those scouting and development budgets back up. And we also want some money to potentially play with in free agency. So we're certainly not done... Uh, moving on from players yet, unfortunately. And unfortunately, uh, Mr. Venturini uh, must be upset about the trade with the Yankees. Uh, yeah, unhappy with transactions, so uh, he's not even willing to talk an extension with us. Um, so we will just go ahead and uh, probably stay at the 1.9 million. Um, that's kind of what the arbitration number is coming off of a uh, season where he hit 203 with only two home runs. I tend to think we can probably win if he's going to come in with a number likely over $2 million. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. And we've got another trade set up. This one's going to really hurt, but I think it's something we have to do. Um, Ramon Herrera, center fielder, who had a really good year for us. 269 batting average, scored 89 runs, 37 doubles, 23 homers, 93 runs driven in. Um, just a nice, solid offensive season. 4.1 war, decent defensive center fielder. Um, the issue is he's going to be making about $7 million next year. Um, and I think he's probably unlikely to hit as well next season as he hit this past season. You know, over the course of his major league career, his OPS plus and WRC plus have both been about 10 points below what he did for us last year. It was kind of a career year for him in many ways, certainly in terms of his home runs, RBIs, runs scored, all career highs. So, um, we talked a little bit in our last episode that I think um, I thought we'd probably have to move on from Herrera and that with Perkins and Hill as our corner outfielders, Carbajal back as a center fielder, and then Canseco and Velasquez as backup outfielders and potentially even Andres Mendez back as a DH slash outfielder. We've got plenty of outfielders for next season and that's also the position where we have tons of talent that is getting pretty close to the major leagues so I'd love to have Herrera back 
but we're going to clear up about $7 million by getting rid of him. We also have to include starting pitcher Willie Brown, 21-year-old, who's not really much of a prospect. We get back some cash, but we also get back Tony Jones, um, who's a respectable major league reliever. He's got a great personality. Um, if he had better movement and didn't give up so many home runs, he could be a really good pitcher. I think in reality he's kind of a average-ish major league pitcher. That's what um, he's shown to be over the years. Uh, but he's more cost-effective than some of the relievers we're going to potentially be moving on from. Also has a great personality. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make that trade. Um, and, and the other thing about Jones is that he does have the stamina to, in the pitches to kind of start for us if we needed him to. He's horrible at holding on runners, um, which isn't optimal. Um, but we're just looking to get something for Herrera. And I think Tony Jones is about the best that we can do. So we're going to go ahead and complete that trade. Uh, fans not happy that we moved on from Herrera, so we continue to take hits. As far as our fan interest, hopefully when we start signing some of the players we've made arbitration offers to, that will help with that. But you can see we've now got $17 million freed up for free agents. Um, still have some more decisions to make, but we do kind of it. We're, we're starting to get to the position where we'll have some money to boost those scouting and development budgets back up towards where I think they need to be. And then, um, you know, we also still will have some money to hopefully help us bring some more players onto this team this offseason. And we've got another deal. Uh, Dennis Gomez, a AAA reliever. Good personality, um, but he's um, going to be out of option years next season and um, has a major league contract. We could have waived and DFA'd him to get him off the books that way, um, but we're able to get some cash back from the Cardinals as well as Jaden Dixon, um, who could kind of take over um, the role that we, we have it for Tony Cook, who we traded away recently as a utility infielder. Um, Dixon is out of option years, which isn't optimal, but he's making the major league minimum. He's durable. He's pretty versatile defensively. He's got a good personality. Not much of a bat. Um, you know, has been well below average over the course of his major league career and has actually been a negative war player. Hopefully he can end up doing better for better than that. Um, but he at least gives us a competent um, glove. Uh, he may or may not end up making the 26-man roster, uh, but given that we're getting some cash back in return, and I think he's not the worst proxy in the world for Tony Cook. Um, I think it makes sense to make this trade for uh, the Pirates. And the fans are shocked that we did not keep Dennis Gomez. This is, again, one of the quirks in the game. Dennis Gomez, a 32-year-old with 24 days of Major League service, has never actually pitched in a major league game. But the fans are shocked we let him go. And we take a huge hit of, uh, I believe, three points to fan interest because uh, that AAA 32-year-old pitcher is no longer part of our organization. The shame, the shame. And given the money we've cleared so far through some of the trades we've made, um, cutting a couple of guys off the twin, uh, off of the 40-man roster, we are going to make an offer to shortstop Luis Linares to come back for one final year with us. You can see his arbitration number close to $7.9 million. can probably get him for a little less than that. Very good defensive shortstop, and he also had a really nice offensive season for us last year. Certainly don't expect him to hit 291 and lead the league in doubles again. Um, but he is a better bat than Coda, the guy we just traded for, who's excellent defensively. Uh, it's conceivable that Coda could be our starting shortstop next season, just given the glove and given the fact that... Um, 
Linares and his arbitration number next season are likely to be completely um, oppressive for us. Yeah, twelve point six million uh, the year after next. So this would clearly be the last year that we have Linares. But given that we um, have taken the hit, um, move it on from big time center fielder. I think that that um, gives us the capacity to bring Linares back, and then um, with Serrano at second, Linares at short. Maybe Coda at third, um, and then we still got guys like Avanzi, Cuevas, the recently acquired Dixon in the mix for our infield. Uh, we're getting to the point where maybe we just kind of need to add one bat as a first baseman in the offseason, and our infield will be in decent shape. Speaking about first base, um, we also do have an option in the minors with Sean Barley. Um, he hit 328 in AAA last year, 18 home runs, um, not good defensively, no speed, not a good bunter, but does look like he can be a somewhat professional hitter. You know, a guy who could go out and hit 280 with 20 home runs in a good season for him when he's completely developed. Um, which for a team like the Pirates probably isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, so we're going to keep making moves, but um, right now one of them is going to be to try to um, bring Mr. Linares back. And it looks like we do also need to make an offer to Tony Jones, who's arbitration eligible. Just picked him up in that trade with the Red Sox. want to make sure that we uh, make an offer to him as well. And Tony Jones, unfortunately, uh, coming from the Red Sox, similar to Giovanni Venturini coming from the Yankees. Those guys are just so angry about being stuck with Pittsburgh that they don't even want to talk deal with us. Um, you would think after an 0-15 season with a 5-14 ERA, uh, Tony Jones would be a little more humble, but I guess not. The modern ball player. And another player we do need to move on to clear some salary um, is Edgar Flores, um, a popular player, so it's not going to be a popular move. But you may remember he's the guy who we left off of our playoff roster because his control is just so problematic. Um, he strikes out a ton of batters, but he also walks a ton of batters, and he's in line to be making a little more than $3 million next year. Um, particularly with the um, fact that we picked up Jones to help in the bullpen. Um, Flores is another guy that we're going to want to move on from. I don't think there's going to be a ton of interest in him in a trade, but we'll see. Yeah, this is kind of a motley crew that we've been seeing when um, we get offers on players who are undesirable. It's pretty mediocre players with pretty bad contracts that we can get in return. I guess we can get Ricky Herrera, who's making the minimum. Um, he is a fan favorite. Um, but he's got no option years left. Um, and he's just not all that great a pitcher. Um, maybe we'll be able to package um, Flores together with somebody else, and he can be a tiny piece that gets us closer to getting a deal done. Um, the big decision we still have left as far as our arbitration eligible players is Andy Ochoa. Um, another fan favorite who's very popular, um, but the 26 year old is in line to make five and a half million dollars next year, coming off a season when he was nine and six with a 492 ERA. Um, not sure what type of market is available for him. I'm going to have to move forward a day because I've made so many trade offers recently. Um, getting some of our coaches signed, so that is positive, or at least interested in contracts. Scouting a bunch of guys in our system also. But let's see what the market is like for Mr. Ochoa. 
I don't know that we can pay him five and a half million dollars next year, but I don't know how much we're going to get for him either. All right, a little more interest here than some of those other players. So uh, hopefully we can get something useful done, um, bring on a player with some value in return for Mr. Ochoa, who's hopefully making a lot less money than he's going to this year. The fans still won't like it, but little secret between you and me. I hate the virtual fans. And it's a tough decision, but I think we're going to move on from Andy Ochoa. Um, I just can't see paying a middle reliever over $5 million a year. We're going to be able to get a little bit of cash back from the Nationals. And we're also going to get Ruben Sanabria, who is a scouting discovery that they made just two days ago. Our scout knows virtually nothing about him, but certainly profiles as a potentially useful outfield bat. Also that way with the OSA, who knows a little more about him. You know, looks like he could be a useful major league bat with some home run power, respectable speed, um, respectable defensively. And he's got three option years left. So kind of the player who I think for the team like the Pirates, to have a guy like him in the system for the next three years who can potentially be a fill-in outfielder for us when we need him has some value. Um, I feel that Ochoa at his best we're not getting full value for, but we also don't want to be spending over $5 million a year on him. So I think this deal does make sense for the Pirates in the financial situation that we're in right now. So the fans won't like it. We're making a lot of moves that the fans do not like this offseason. Taking a big hit in fan interest. Hopefully we'll start getting some of those arbitration eligible players signed and hopefully some of them are pretty popular too. But we definitely are opening up money where we're going to have options this offseason and we're not going to completely tank in terms of our scouting and development budgets, which is good. And with the money we've cleared off the books, um, we're going to try to bring Omar Gayona back. He doesn't pitch a lot of innings for us, and he hasn't been particularly effective, but um, he is a rare left-handed arm out of the bullpen for us. Um, and he's also a fan favorite, and given that we've taken so many hits to popularity, feel like we want to offer him the... Uh, arbitration extension um, just to kind of fill a hole in our bullpen. Two million-ish dollars is definitely getting to be fully priced for him. Very well could be his last season with us, although maybe it is anyways. Does he still? Five years and 119 days. Um, yeah, this is his last option year coming up, so um, He'll be a free agent after this season, but we're going to see if we can uh, bring Mr. Gayona back and try to pronounce his name correctly for all of you over his uh, likely final year in Pittsburgh in 2042. So finally, some good news for the Pirates early in this offseason. Um, got the arbitration deal signed with Elijah Helton, which the fans are happy about. Uh, potential closer Greg Gaylord back, which the fans are pleased with. Um, you can see we're signing also a ton of our minor league free agents, which is good. Uh, Heriberto Rosales. We have a trainer signed. Uh, struggling to sign a manager. Did get a hitting coach signed for the minors. Um, so a little bit of progress this week, a little bit of bump in fan interest from a couple of those signings. Uh, taking a look at the personnel situation. Uh, it's basically just that one manager opening, so we're in pretty good shape at this point. We've gotten most of the holes in our minor league system filled at this point. And we've been trying to deal some of these... Um, other players, there's really not much of a market at all for Edgar Flores. Um, we don't want to be spending about $3 million at him. We'll give it one last look as to what um, we can pick for him in trade. But 
there's been nothing that we would want back in return, even when we've just tried to get a scrub minor league or can't do anything. And this is a very familiar list of players on horrible contracts. Actually, the Blue Jays are offering a couple of younger guys. Um, I mean, Nick Navarro is a good personality. Not really a major league bat, but he does have three option years left. Hey, it's a body. It's better than we were getting before. Alex Soto, also a good personality, pretty good defensively. Um, he also has three option years left, too. Um, we'll take what we can get at this point. Um, all of these other guys um, are making more money. And then there's also Ricky Herrera, who just didn't do a lot for us and is older that we've seen in some deals. But the Blue Jays, kind of out of nowhere, have a little bit of interest. Um, I think we're going to go with the better glove in Soto. We'll see if we can get more than just him. Um, but we do want to clear that last bit of salary off of the books. And uh, glad that we're going to get anything for him. I was kind of going to show that we were just getting offered very expensive major leaguers who weren't that good in return. But if we can get a prospect with some option years for Flores, get that contract off the books, it's better than nothing. And we were actually able to get some cash in return in addition to Soto. Um, so we are going to happily move on from Edgar Flores. Um, loved the strikeouts. Hated the walks. Can't see paying $3 million a year for him. Popular so the fans won't be happy, but they should be getting used to it now. And another one of these trades, just to clean up guys on the 40-man roster, um, Angel Cotton, uh, backup catcher, never played in the majors for us. Uh, don't need him anymore, I think, with the fact that we picked up uh, Venturini from the Yankees. Don't want to be guaranteeing him 700000 And then Omar Lopez is actually going to be a free agent, but they're willing to deal for him. Um, He's a guy who's been up and down the last couple years, but has been spending progressively more time in Indianapolis and less time on the Major League roster as we've uh, improved our team. Another extremely popular player that will take a hit for trading away. Um, so maybe we really shouldn't trade him away, given that we're just getting Tony Trujillo in return, who's really just organizational depth. Um but I guess if Lopez signs with somebody else anyways, we'll still take the hit. I guess if we remove him, yeah, we can't even get the deal done. Not that it's all that exciting of a deal. Um, but maybe we don't trade away Lopez just to uh, hope that if he does move on at another point, we don't, uh, we don't take the hit for losing him. You know, obviously we can throw in just about any piece of garbage and um, they'll be happy with us 35 year old reliever with a good personality we'll add him in get the deal done for Trujillo who's just organizational depth and a tiny bit of cash but we get cotton off the books and at this point we've you know really cleared up the um, 40-man roster, you know, kind of gotten rid of the players who we didn't even want to be paying major league minimums to. Um, we've traded away the players that we didn't want in arbitration. It's unfortunate that Gotti, Jones, and Venturini don't really want to talk with us. Let's see if that's changed for any of them. Nope, Venturini's still unhappy to be in Pittsburgh instead of New York. I'm assuming Tony Jones is still unhappy to be in Pittsburgh instead of Boston. And then I'm assuming with Ricky Gotti that uh, he was just so frustrated with our negotiations that he still doesn't want to talk. So we've got offers outstanding to all three of them. Hopefully we'll win our arbitration cases and bring them back. Um, I have decided I just can't submit a qualifying offer to Adrian Oliva after all of the work we've done trying to kind of clean up our financial situation, the chance of him 
hitting the bid if we put a $18.9 million off there, out there to them for one year is just way too high. Um, we just can't afford that chance. Um, you can see we've cleared up a lot of money at this point, though. We've also been getting back little bits and pieces in trades, which helps, but um, we've now got the opportunity to, and we'll actually probably make those changes now. We're not going to get it back to exactly where we'd like it to be yet in terms of our scouting and development, but at least get them moving in a better direction in case we forget about it. And that still gives us money for free agents, some money for extensions. And obviously we can tweak that again going forward if we need to. Um, we're also, you know, we'll see what happens with the um, draft Actually, we won't be in the draft lottery, so we're pretty confident in that number. So, yeah, actually, maybe we can take that down to about 8,500, which is good. So we've got money to play with now. Um, we definitely have a weaker roster because we've gotten rid of some really good players. Um, but they were really good players that were going to be too expensive for what they were or what they are for the Pirates, in my opinion. And we've now got Luis Linares back at shortstop. Uh, the fans are happy with that. They say the reaction is amazing. Uh, we're still not back to where we were when we started the offseason, but we're at least moving in the right direction. Still going to hear from Arenales and Gaona. Hopefully one or both of them gives us a little bump in fan interest, and then we'll... Uh, We'll be heading into award season shortly, uh, just a couple days away from gold gloves. Um, and as we talked about in our last episode, certainly feel that um, we've got candidates for rookie of the year. We've got a legitimate MVP candidate with Isaiah Hill. Um, we've got a candidate for the Cy Young Award and Ricky Gotti. I don't think he's going to win it, but uh, award season will be probably the most interesting one that we've had for the Pirates um, in the four years since we took over. And apparently we didn't offer Willie Arenales enough money, but uh, Omar Gaona did extend with us. Nice little fan fin, fan interest bump there. Uh, try to see if we can get an offer out to Arenales that will make him happy. And awards season off to a good start. Uh, Joe Gaetti of the International League champion Indianapolis Indians, uh, IL Manager of the Year. And top fielders, Tony Machuca, uh, who joined us at the uh, trade deadline, wins a gold glove. Uh, the only gold glove winner we have. And uh, he clearly will not be back with us next year because he is uh, looking for $37.6 million. We wish you well, Mr. Machuca. And for reliever of the year, uh, Greg Gaylord, who we have already re-signed in arbitration, had 44 saves, 356 ERA, 126 strikeouts, and 93 and two-thirds innings, and also an 8-9 and nine record. He did some, start some games for us at the beginning of the year uh, before we called up Mr. Longoria, who's a rookie of the year prospect. Um, did get a couple of votes there for um, reliever of the year. We'll find out Silver Sluggers tomorrow would be a huge upset if Isaiah Hill is not among them, uh, but would probably also be a huge upset if uh, there's a second pirate who actually wins a uh, Silver Slugger award. And taking a look at the Silver Sluggers, uh, no surprise, Isaiah Hill, who I think is also an MVP candidate this year, um, wins his third Silver Slugger award in three major league seasons. Uh, three-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger winner, a Rookie of the Year, and an MVP in his rookie season. And Sean Barley, who we mentioned, is potentially um, our first baseman next year. Uh, nice honor for him, International League Player of the Year. Uh, he's not going to be quite the hitter that we had in the perennial 300 hitting Oliva at first base this year. Um, and also don't love the glove, but uh, the bat looks like it's pretty close to ready for the major leagues, and certainly hitting 328 in uh, AAA with a little bit of power would indicate that he is ready also. 
And we did finally get Willie Arenale signed. And you can see Perkins won Rookie of the Year. I guess my only question is, did Longoria come in second? Um, Longoria came in third. Perkins was actually a unanimous winner. Um, we talked about this in the uh, episode before the season started. Uh, our scouting, investment in scouting really paid off. Uh, he was a discovery that we had an opportunity to sign. A uh, really nice rookie year, 286 average, 29 homers, 87 ribbies. Unfortunately, we're kind of not paying full value for him, but we unfortunately don't have him on a major league minimum contract. We had to give him a minor league contract with a pretty decent major league number to get him signed, uh, but still a player who's got good value for us potentially the next few years. And we'll probably be able to trade and move on from a few years from now when we're really desperately trying to make room for some of our, our big uh, outfield prospects on the Major League roster. Check in on Mr. Longoria one final time this offseason. 10-2 uh, and two record, 271 ERA, 207 strikeouts in just 146 innings. Um, just nasty stuff. Three brilliant pitches, great movement. Uh, his control is going to be an issue, and the fact that he's 23 years old and fragile is going to be an issue. Um, but one of the top prospects in baseball. Um, just hope that we can keep him healthy through the uh, probably five more seasons that we're going to have him before he heads off to free agency because given his health issues, uh, he's just an incredibly risky player for us to uh even consider signing to a long-term contract. And Tristan Champion and the Mets ended up winning the NL Cy Young Award after 17 and 12 season. Uh, you can see Gotti finished fourth in the voting, and then Luis Longoria and Tony Santana also got votes. So uh, three of our starting pitchers with votes for NL Cy Young Award this year. Um, you know, that documents the reason we wanted to keep this rotation largely together for one final year with um, these three, plus Bobby Gonzalez and Heriberto Rosales. Uh, feel like we're going to have another top-notch rotation next year as we um, try to get back into the playoffs and hopefully have more success there than we have in the past. And as we get to the NL MVP voting Isaiah Hill's brilliant start to his major league career continues. Uh, 25 first place votes, um, but a second All Star or second Most Valuable Player award for Mr. Hill. So uh, you can see the numbers that he's put up across his first three seasons as a major leaguer. Um, led the league in homers and ribbies this year. Led the league in slugging percentage. Led the league in batter war when he was a rookie. Uh, joined Fred Lynn and Ichiro as the only players in baseball history to win Rookie of the Year and Most Valuable Player in the same season. He's added a second Most Valuable Player award now. Uh, as you may remember, we did sign him to an extension um, before the season began. So we've got him for his three arbitration years at numbers that were less than he was expected to make an arbitration back then. Uh, with a second MVP award, I'm sure his arbitration numbers would be even a scarier for us. Um, after these next three years, his salaries are going to start getting up into the stratosphere for what uh, Pittsburgh can afford to pay, though. So at some point, we probably are going to need to trade him away and move on from him. But um, as long as we can have this guy on our team, we're going to enjoy it. And it really would be a great situation for Pittsburgh if we're able to kind of remain successful on the field for the next three seasons, maybe keep increasing our budget, and maybe get into a situation where we can uh, keep Isaiah Hill around as a cornerstone of this Pittsburgh franchise for the long term. But at this point, uh, that's probably a little bit of a hope trade, but uh, we'll keep hoping and trying to work towards that goal. And we've gotten our arbitration cases uh, settled. Ricky Gotti actually got his number. We offered him 14 and a half. He wasn't looking for quite as much as we had hoped, um, so he's going to make about a million more than we had offered. 
uh, Tony Jones, uh, we won that case. Giovanni Venturini, we also won that case. Um, Hall of Fame voting begins. Um, I don't typically vote for the Hall of Fame, and I will not vote for the Hall of Fame, but did want to share with those of you who remember the Kansas City Royal days that I believe this will be Mr. Bobby Witt Jr.'s first time on the ballot, unless my math is wrong. Hmm. MJ Melendez, another former, uh, former royal on the ballot. There he is, Bobby Witt Jr. on the ballot for the first time. So we will find out in a couple months um, whether the brilliant career that he had in Kansas City with us. Um, you can see perennial gold glove winner, perennial all-star, uh, rookie of the year, some silver sluggers, um, major league champion in all six of the Royals championships that we won there, some postseason honors as well. Uh, we're not going to vote for him. We're going to play it straight and see what the um, what the voters say but Bobby Witt Jr. will be on the uh, Hall of Fame ballot so we're going to find out in early January um, whether or not Mr. Witt Jr. is a first ballot Hall of Famer. And we'll also check in briefly on player development. Um, minor league system uh, ranked first overall again. Uh, we talked a lot in our last episode about Aguiar, Gonzalez, and Ruaucho. Did want to check in on Alex Arroyo, though. Uh, got some questions on him in the comments from a three-quarter badger a few days ago. Uh, so I wanted to check in on him. He is the guy who dropped to us at 13th in the draft this year. And you can see that that's proving to be a uh, excellent, uh, excellent pick for us because the 13th pick in the draft this past season is now considered the number 22 prospect in baseball. Went just one in five uh, in rookie ball for us. Did put up a 330 ADRA over 58 and two thirds innings. Gave up too many home runs. Gave up a lot of hits, um, but still had a positive WAR on the season. Uh, just turned 19 years old, kind of right at the end of the season for him. Uh, still like his personality, love his stamina, like the potential five-pitch arsenal. Uh, still several years away from potentially being a major leaguer, but uh, really happy to have uh, Mr. Arroyo as part of our system. Uh, Julio Castillo, uh, international free agent signing from last season, is considered the number 33 prospect in baseball, so um, a potential big acquisition for us there. And with Aguiar, Gonzalez, and Ruaucho kind of highlights the uh, excellent um, outfielders that we potentially have coming, coming our way. Uh, Luis Flores, our international free agent signing from last year, number 79 prospect in baseball. Uh, went eight and four in rookie ball with a 3.51 ERA. Doesn't have the best personality in the world, but a good work ethic. Uh, hopefully, he'll continue to improve. And then Sal Valadez, who was our second round pick in 2038, our first draft, uh, definitely got off to a slow start in Class A ball. At one point, I think he was 0 and 12, so he actually uh, won some games down the stretch. Um, not the most successful season, uh, but still has a good work ethic um, and still with a six-pitch arsenal uh, potentially could be a useful major league pitcher for us. So uh, quick check-in on some of those players. We're going to sim another day or two to the free agency filings, and then it's going to be uh, time to conclude this episode. And the international free agents have filed... Usually there's not too much that's all that interesting to us here, but always like to take a look, make sure that there's uh, no one who can potentially sneak through and become a big-time player for us. And the Major League free agents have filed also, and uh, a very familiar name on this list for those of you who watched our Kansas City Royals um, 
playthrough. Alex Vasquez, uh, finally a free agent from the Royals. Um, you can see still a pretty nice batting profile. Has won a ton of hardware over the course of his career. Uh, he probably has had a better major league career than Bobby Witt Jr. Actually, he certainly has had a better major league career than Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, age of 35 now, 12 years in the majors, closing in on 400 home runs. Um, certainly should finish with over 1,500 RBIs. Very well could get to 500 home runs, quite honestly. Probably not going to get to 3,000 hits, but he is a career 300 hitter. Uh, three-time batting champion, led the league in ribbies three times, home runs once when uh, we had him just a point or two away from a triple crown in what was our last season as uh, general manager of the Kansas City Royals in 2037, uh, led the league in OPS three times, um, WRC plus four times, uh, OPS four times if I could count, uh, Led the league in hits once, and you can see he's led the league in doubles five times. So uh, just a brilliant career for Mr. Vasquez, who will be a free agent, and I'm sure looking for a way more money, uh, $26 million a year than we can possibly provide. Um, another former um, Royal, not a, as long-term a Royal, uh, but Gabe Pryor, uh, also a free agent. He's wrecked physically looking for big money. So there are uh, some interesting players out there, as I've talked about, um, with all the moves we made, getting rid of some salary. We do have some money to sign some free agents at this point. Still would love to get those scouting and development budgets higher when all is said and done, but uh, we are going to start uh, jumping into the deep end in free agency in our next episode and uh, look forward to hopefully having you join us then. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.